Hi guys and dolls. So today I have a very special video for you. Uh, this is a skin, a skin, cr skin cream, a sunscreen skincare focus video. I've been meeting to make this video for over a year. Uh, and you guys might come to understand uh, by the time you're done watching this video, if you can finish it, because it's long. Uh, the reason why it took me so long to make this, uh, a lot of my hesitation came from the fact that I'm not a medical professional, and I don't want my opinion to be said or um, seen as such. So here's my little disclaimer. I am not a medical professional, I'm not a dermatologist, and I'm not a physician. So um, any advice that I give you is from my own you know, experience, and also, uh, you know, my own opinions, and from research that I personally have done, I do have a little bit of formalish training. I had some skincare and sunscreen skincare, sorry, sun care training when I worked with Sephora, but none of it is medical training, so uh, definitely if you have any questions, consult a physician, you know, there's going to be a lot of great resources if you Google it. I actually will have some listed below. There's a fellow YouTuber who makes skin videos. Uh, he is, I believe, a dermatologist, uh, so I will have a link to him as well as a few other resources for skin care and uh, really sunscreen uh, information in particular. This video is not intended to be like, this is a good one, you should go buy this, and um, yeah, this one's more about like the actual, you know, what are UVB rays, what is physical, what is a chemical sunscreen, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, we'll have a list below for you to find out like a few sunscreens that I think are really good quality and, you know, which ones have worked for me in the past. And, uh, as well as, like, this is good for dry or oily skin or for everyone, blah, blah, blah. So, without further ado, let's get it started, because we've got a lot of info to cover. I had to make myself a lot of notes. There are five pages of notes front and back, so, yeah. First question, what is sunscreen? Sunscreens are ingredients that actually prevent UV radiation from damaging the skin. So, uh, UVA and UVB rays, as well as UVC. We'll get to more on that in just a second. Uh, what is SPF? So SPF is a rating that measures how long a sunscreen is able to prevent UVB radiation from damaging the skin. UVB rays because those are the ones that cause burning and can cause cancer. So doing your homework on sunscreens is really important since they're not required by law to protect you from UVA rays but that is very important and can actually affect your health so it's very important to do your homework on sunscreen. What you want to look for is broad spectrum or physical sunscreen and again I'm gonna get to more on that in just a sec. Okay so I already talked about what SPF, uh, an SPF rating is but what is it really? So an SPF of say 15 protects your skin for 15 times longer than your skin's natural barrier function. So let's say that your skin would naturally protect you for 10 minutes and before you would start to burn or have any permanent damage on the skin. So that means that an SPF of 15 would protect you for 150 minutes, or roughly two and a half hours. Now considering that sun damage usually happens within a couple of minutes, you know, two minutes of being outside, you know, you get the idea. SPF is not a lesson in addition. Um, an SPF 15 product and an SPF 25 product used together do not equal an SPF 40. Uh, it, it equals an SPF 25. And it's a good solid 25 since you have two products and you are doubling up and you're adding extra layers to your protection, which is always good. It's not something you can add up. So keep that in mind. You're not going to put two 15s on and end up with a 30. If you want 30, you need to put something on that has an SPF 30 because then it's going to have the level of ingredients and level of protection that you need. Okay, so I'm going to kind of um, backtrack. I'm going to go back to uh, what are UVA and UVB rays. So the majority of rays that are actually on planet Earth are uh, UVA rays, and that's about 94%. Now, these are the ultraviolet rays that actually cause wrinkles, leathering of the skin, a general loss of elasticity, elasticity, I can't say that word, uh, at sagging. What UVA radiation does is it actually breaks down the collagen in our skin. And the collagen is the thing that makes our skin 
you know, springy and, and bounce back and young and youthful and juicy and all those great things we want our skin to be. And when that breaks down, it's actually irreplaceable despite what um, some uh, commercials will tell you about their cream. It's not, You can't replace collagen with a cream. That's a whole another discussion, but that's what UVA rays do. They basically age us prematurely. They also can cause hyperpigmentation or age spots. Not cute, not fun. Let's not go there. So um, a very small percentage actually of the rays that are here on good old planet Earth are uh, UVB rays, about 1-6% to 6 of the rays that we see, depending on where you live, time of day, etc, etc. Um, these are the burning rays. They are also responsible for cancer. And uh, their intensity varies by season, time of day, where you live. So for instance, um, you know, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., they're actually at their strongest. That's when we need to wear hats and such, in addition to wearing sunscreen. And they're also strongest in the summer months. Now, UVC rays are, uh, and I'm totally reading off my notes, you guys, so I'm sorry if I'm not looking at you, but this is a lot of detailed information here. Uh, UVC rays are, for the most part, they're filtered out by the ozone layer. However, in places where the ozone layer is really thin, like, say, Australia, uh, there's a much higher risk factor for UVC, and the, these, this type of ray is the number one contributor to cancer. So let's talk about cancers. About 1 million cases of skin cancer are reported a year in the United States. That is beyond ridiculous considering this is a preventable disease, people. This is something that you can easily protect yourself for, from by putting on sunscreen. It's really not that hard. Melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer. It's also the second most common. 75% of skin cancer deaths are related to melanoma. And there are 60,000 new cases of melanoma every year. Very sad. Uh, sadly, the largest age group at risk for skin cancer in general is people ages uh, 15 to 29. This is typically the age group that spends the most time in the sun, and it's also the age group that's the least likely to wear skin uh, skin care. I'm sorry, um, sunscreen. So yeah, really, really important. I also want to mention that actually men are at a higher risk for skin cancer than women are because men don't wear any makeup. So props to us for wearing makeup, I guess. Okay, so now that we've uh, gone on a little bit of a downer with the cancer, I'm going to bring it back, bring it back to information that's helpful for you, not just, you know, upsetting. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to talk about the different types of, of sunscreen. Sunscreen? Sunscreen? sunscreen <laughs> different types of sunscreen and I don't mean you know this specific product I mean the actual ingredients themselves so there are two types of sunscreen there's physical and chemical so physical sunscreens can are mineral sunscreens that actually reflect or scatter UVA UVB UVC rays uh, there are only two types of uh, or two ingredients that are physical sunscreens that's titanium dioxide and zinc oxide uh, one thing that's great about them is that there's a very low risk of irritation because it's a physical blocker. You don't have to wait before you go outside. You can slather it on and head out the door. Because it actually creates a physical barrier on the skin, it can create a white, purple, or ashy appearance on the skin. And this will depend on the concentration of the ingredient, the particular blend of it. Some products are tinted so you really can't tell. So on and so forth. Uh, now, chemical sunscreens are synthetic ingredients such as ovobenzone, oxybenzone, so on and so forth. I'll have a full list below of both chemical and physical sunscreens, so you can have a full list that you can you know, copy and paste if you'd like. Uh, now, these ones actually work by absorbing UVA and UVB rays, so you have to put these on about 30 minutes before you go out in the sun so that your skin can fully absorb the product. Now, the positives of chemical sunscreen is that uh, it doesn't have that whitish cast. Now, for me personally, I've found that if I just use uh, chemical sunscreen only, I typically will still burn. I am very, very fair, and it's just a fact of life that very, very fair people tend to burn easily in the sun, easily, even more easily than people with um, medium to darker skin tones. Now that's not to say that people with really dark skin shouldn't wear sunscreen, uh, although they are at a lower risk. 
you still should wear sunscreen and chemical sunscreens are typically a good option for darker skin because it doesn't give you the whitish cast and frankly who needs that. Now I also want to mention about uh, the difference between chemical and physical sunscreens. Physical sunscreens protect you from both UVA and UVB rays. They're, again, there's only two ingredients, but they protect you from both. Now, you, uh, chemical sunscreens will only pre prevent um, UVA or UVB radiation. However, when they are, when a company makes a product, they typically put a blend of ingredients in to actually come up with a full broad spectrum sunscreen. So like for instance, this one has ovobenzone, uh, homo salate, I believe is how you say that, and oxybenzone. So this is a pure chemical sunscreen, uh, meaning that it's only chemical, there are no physical blockers in this, uh, but it does have a blend together so it has full UVA and UVB ratings. In fact, this one has been tested in Japan, so in addition to having a uh, American rating of SPF 15, it also is PA++. Uh, this is an SPF 55. This one has oxytinoate, titanium dioxide, and zinc oxide. So this is a blend of the two physical forms of sunscreen as well as a chemical uh, sunscreen. So you're, I, that's what I really like is when it, there's a chemical and a physical in there and I just feel like I'm really well protected. And this one is a PA++++. So yeah, I just wanted to really compound into you that you need to do your homework on sunscreens because the FDA regulation in, uh, in the United States does not actually make sure that things have UVA ratings, so we want to make sure that we have a well-blended, um, complete, broad-spectrum broad spectrum sunscreen. So I want to talk to you a little bit more about labeling. Um, terms like sunblock and waterproof and uh, ratings above SPF 50 are very soon going to become a thing of the past since these usually create an illusion that the product is going to protect them longer than products that say water resistant sunscreen or ratings that are at 50 or below and really an SPF 55 is not going to protect you any better than a SPF 50. There's no such thing as waterproof. Eventually things will break down in water and yeah. How to apply your sunscreen is really important. Chemical sunscreens need to be put on before your daily moisturizer or as part of your daily moisturizer so that it can fully absorb, whereas physical sunscreens need to be put on after your daily moisturizer or as part of your daily moisturizer uh, so that it can fully, um, so that your moisturizer can fully absorb before you put the physical barrier on top. And then uh, in terms of actual application, you want to put about a tablespoon on your face uh, neck, decollete, and ears. The skin on your ears, eyelids, and lips is some of the thinnest skin. It's some of the most detrimental skin to actually get sun, sun cancer. And not to mention what it'll, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be vain here, but what it'll do to your looks. Uh, not so cute to have to have, you know, a big chunk of your lip removed because you got skin cancer. So just wear, you know, like lip balm that has at least an SPF 15 and reapply if you're going to be out in the sun for longer than an hour. And then you want to actually apply a full ounce on your body. I know it sounds like a lot. If you put lotion on your skin every day, you probably put that much on, don't even realize it. Now, in terms of reapplication, despite whether you're wearing an SPF 15 or an SPF 50, you are going to want to reapply at least every two hours that you're in the sun. So if you put you know, all your sunscreen on at 8 a.m. and you go to work and you don't see sunlight again until 5 o'clock when you get off work, you don't need to reapply all day if you're not going to be in the sun. Uh, you will want to reapply before you actually go out in the sun again, uh, but other than that, you'll be fine. And in terms of reapplying, the companies that are out right now have made it really easy to reapply with powder. Uh, especially like over makeup like this one right here this is a powder foundation and uh you know you have to blot your nose with powder anyway might as well do it with one that has sunscreen so i hope that my sunscreen video was helpful for you and wasn't too wordy i know i've just talked my own ears off for the last 20 minutes that i've been filming this uh but yeah i hope that you guys learned something from this i know it's like a huge um huge can of worms. I'm probably going to get tons of questions and I'm going to try to answer the ones that I can but again keep in mind I am not a medical professional and uh, if you want to seek more information definitely your first resource is going to be Google and I feel like a jerk being like Google it but that's not how I feel it's just that you know that's 
it's a great search engine. And uh, also I'm going to link to that other YouTuber who is a doctor who can help you out possibly. Just maybe even watching his videos and kind of learning from him. His are a lot shorter than mine, just so you know. And um, yeah, and then also I'm going to have the list of the sunscreens below for you as well as a list of some products that I've used that have worked really, really well for me uh, and uh, a few that were maybe a little too oily for me but might be good for dry skin such and so on and so on and so forth. And I've got a good um, price blend from $12 or $8 I think maybe to like 30 and plus. So yeah. I will see you guys in my next video and have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.